On this episode of Pop Culture Decoded Daily, we explain why we think Chernobyl won the Emmy for Best Cinematography, we break down why the new Rambo won't be able to live up to the original, and did you notice any Easter eggs in the new Birds of Prey poster? Hi, welcome to Pop Culture Decoded Daily. Uh, We are producers and filmmakers here at Insider, and we're gonna break apart some of the movies and TV series that you guys love. So each episode, Nate and I are going to take a look at a clip that's relevant in the news, that's been trending, people have been talking about, and get into what each of us really loved about that piece and some of the technical aspects that went into it that you might not have noticed at first. Sounds good. So what are we talking about this week? So the clip that I brought in today is from Chernobyl. Uh, Chernobyl nominated for 19 Emmy Awards. Already won a couple Emmy Awards in the Creative Arts Emmys, which happened this past weekend. Those are for the more technical side of of the Emmys. Mm. It won for cinematography, which is what I want to talk about. So which episode are we talking about specifically? Uh, So we are talking about uh, the second episode of the series, and it's at the very end of the episode. The reactor has already exploded. Three men are going into the reactor to go turn on a valve to prevent another explosion from happening. And they're exposing themselves to a bunch of radiation, essentially a suicide mission. So let's take a look. Usually with cinematography, people think of often like Lawrence of Arabia, like big, bright, beautiful landscapes. And one of the reasons I brought it in is because you don't really think of darkness as cinematography. Mm. Cinematographers have a lot of jobs, but one of their main jobs and most important is lighting a scene. Mm -hmm. Filming for dark scenes is very difficult. You need to balance it between it being too bright and and too dark where you can't see anything. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So for example, right here when his light is going out, Mm -hmm. as you can see, This is the only light that should be Mm. illuminating the scene, but in the background here, I see it. There's some lighting, Uh, and again, up here with the top of the pipe there. Right. Yeah. Where does that that light come from? Where does that light come from? Right. Right. So that's one of the important considerations that cinematographers need to take Mm. into account: is how much lighting do I need to put in where it's realistic? Mm but also enough lighting where I can see. So I can actually show some of the behind the scenes photos. Here's what the set looks like. And as you can see here, there are two big overhead lights with diffusers on them to make the entire scene a little bit brighter. It's always gonna be easier to make a scene darker in post-production than to lighten it back up. Uh, So, you know, something that is reminding me a lot of is, is Game of Thrones. You know, there was that huge controversy about <laughs> yeah. people saying, I can't see anything, especially yeah. that Battle of Winterfell episode yeah. where it was just pitch darkness. No one had any idea what was going on. But you know, this, not to throw shade, but this seems <laughs> to be a great example that shows like you can still convey darkness without actually being dark and still being able to see things. Yeah, absolutely. And I do think they were at a bit of a disadvantage with a bit more action-y, right, right, but it was pretty dark. <laughs> right. I mean, their their sort of explanation was that they're trying to use the lighting from that era, which was like candles and fire. True. But I don't know. I just couldn't see anything. It was yeah. really frustrating. Yeah. So Nate, what clip do you want to talk about today? Right. So as you know, Rambo Last Blood is coming to theaters. Uh, a lot of people aren't interested, I think. I'm starting to dislike you. <laughs> but personally, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the original, so I got to talk about it. So I... I, I I don't really want to talk about the technical aspect of it. I want to talk more about the film itself. Because, yeah. you know, it is it is such a classic. It is like a legendary status movie. Yeah. So, you know, like sort of why is that? So here, here's sort of what I want to talk about Rambo is, is, you know, if you've seen the first one, it was a very message driven movie. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. It was it was about essentially it was about PTSD. Yeah. It was like, it, it showed Rambo as sort of like this really hurt hero, who, who was still a hero, but he was very hurt from like the war and the memories of like genocide and everything like that. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, what's, what's the first image that comes to your mind when I say Rambo? It is the mass killing, right? Where he's like, has a huge machine gun, he's fine. It's like, I think most people. Most people, yeah. But that's, you know, that's actually not sort of the image 
from Rambo 1. That's actually no. like more yeah. Rambo 2. Yeah. That's, I, you know, it's, it is really weird because Rambo 1 is such a classic and was you know, loved by critics so much because it had such a clear message and showing a, a story that we've never seen before of like a, a PTSD. So it carried on that and many people think th sort of that message disappeared by the second one, but that's not true. You know, if you watch the second one, there's still a lot of that like lines about the nihilistic side of war and how yeah. like we're all products of, of yeah. the government <laughs> and things like that. Yeah. And then by third, just action. It was gone. Yeah. You know, I think it's also, also it changed how action was portrayed. Because first one, if you see it, Rambo is really, really, you know, tactical. He's always hiding. Yeah. And then from, you know, second and third one, he's invincible. Which, Absolutely. yeah, I think it's mainly because it changed that message. You know, it changed from sort of focusing on the PTSD and the damages of war to like, yeah, action hero, like let's let's mow some people down. It, I think it's very ironic that you know someone who sort of represented like the dark side of government, how we're sending these people to wars and not really taking care of them, and you know, after a couple of movies become like an American hero. And yeah. he's like, you know, the quintessential symbolism of like that era, like America, like strong America, yeah. like we gotta go to other countries and like protect our interests kind of a thing, yeah. which I always found really interesting and ironic at the same time. So our team here at Insider can't wait for the new Birds of Prey trailer to come out. We need but, an official one. Yeah, but in the meantime, they dropped a poster the other day, mm -hmm. and we just wanted to point out a couple Easter eggs that we were pretty excited about. They released an extremely high resolution poster. They knew um, we were looking. Yeah, so they knew, <laughs> they knew that we were looking for the Easter eggs. So if you look here, uh -huh. Harley Quinn, she <laughs> has crossed out the references to Puddin, which is her pet name for the Joker, obviously. Right. Uh, Jared Leto's Joker uh, seems like it probably won't be appearing. Um, so there's that. And then another one that we found was on uh, Ewan McGregor's character. Uh, he plays the Black Mask. Mm -hmm. Uh, but as you can see here, he has a RS, very tiny RS on his on his left glove there. Yeah. And that's a reference to his character, Roman Sionis, who then turns into the Black Mask later. Well, yeah. uh, that's it for this episode of Pop Culture Decoded Daily. We will see you next time. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Off to a good start. <clears throat> God. <laughs>